Hey there everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to do some fun hosting activities. We're first gonna start off with a elegant yet budget-friendly tablescape, and then we're gonna do some baking because there is this half-baked harvest recipe that I have been dying to try, so we're gonna bake that together, and then we're gonna finish it all off by doing this really elegant yet simple and easy DIY that's really inexpensive and also makes a great gift. So, should be a really fun video, and without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna give this table a springy look with a color palette of berry and blushy hues to create a soft and inviting look for guests. So the first thing that I always like to start with is a table runner, and I like to use flowy textured fabrics. So I found this mauve colored cheesecloth at Hobby Lobby for just a couple of dollars, and this is gonna provide the perfect soft base of color to build off of. So I did buy two of these runners, but it was a lot longer than I thought. So I ended up only using one because when doing a cheesecloth runner, I like to do at least two layers of fabric because it helps to build up the texture. And I also make sure to kind of bunch it up and create waves and curves with the edges just to make it look more organic and flowy. And this is just more visually pleasing to the eye because it gives the runner some movement and kind of resembles flowing water, which I think is really pretty. So next, I just wanted to soften the runner even more by adding some greenery. And instead of buying a ton of garland, I'm just gonna be using four of these stems that I found at Hobby Lobby. And I just place the stem towards the center of the table and then cover up that stem with the greenery of the next one. And then I did the same thing over on the other side with the stems also pointing towards the center of the table. And with this tablescape, I did leave an open section in the middle because I always like to anchor my table with some sort of floral arrangement to add color. So here I just use this ceramic plant Planter, and I will link it below, but you can use anything, you know, a thrifted planter, a kitchen crock usually works really well. I just try to pick something that is lower in height. And then to anchor our arrangement, I like to first start out with some flowy greenery. So I got these stems for $6 each at Target and I used two of them and I like to fluff them out a little bit and then arrange them so they're flowing over the sides of the vase. And a little hack to stabilize them is just to take two of the end stems from each side and then twist them together in the middle. And this just gives us some nice structure and movement to build off of for the rest of our arrangement. And then I found these super realistic peonies online. They were very affordable and I will link them below, but they're kind of rubbery, so they feel like real flowers. And I just love the soft pink color of them. So I used four and I kind of just spread them out, making sure to vary the height of each one a little bit. And then I also used this blush rose stem that I got for $3.50 on sale at Hobby Lobby. And I like this one because it looks very realistic and it has some green leaves just to help bulk up the full foliage a bit and it also has buds so it helps the arrangement to look more lifelike and organically gathered with different stages of blooms. And then for our last floral stem I wanted to add a punch of contrast but still tie everything back together to that mauve table runner. So I chose these burgundy stems that I also got from Hobby Lobby and I used three of them to finish off this arrangement and this adds the perfect punch of contrast but it still works with that berry color palette that we have going on. And when creating a floral arrangement, I like to do a mix of some floral stems that are like statement flowers, things like peonies, roses, dahlias, and then mix in a more wildflower-like stem. And these burgundy berry stems are perfect for incorporating that variation in there. It just creates a more gathered organic feel. And next it was time to set the table. And you all know that I love to keep things very natural and earthy. So I picked out these gorgeous woven chargers and I absolutely love the casual look of these for spring and summer tablescapes. So many designer sites sell these and they can be very pricey. So I thought this was a great way to incorporate that designer look for less. I thought these added a nice earthy organic texture to the table and just dress it up a bit without making it feel too formal. And then for the plates, I'm just using these speckled stoneware plates that I got from Target. And I'm pretty sure I've used these in every tablescape video I've done. They're just so affordable and so versatile. And I love the faux handmade look that they have with the slightly uneven texture and organic edges. It's a fun way to layer in a unique piece that's neutral and isn't too distracting. And then for napkins, I went with these checkered ones that I showed previously in my last decor haul. Checkered pattern 
patterns are super big in textiles right now and I just thought they'd be nice for adding a touch of pattern. And then I also showed you all in my garden with me video how I planted some lavender in both pots and in my garden and they've been doing so well. So I decided to harvest some and use some as a decorative garnish on the napkins. And this is just such a sweet, simple and free detail to gather something from outdoors, whether it's a floral clipping or just a simple piece of green foliage. So what I did was take the napkin and then I folded it diagonally twice, making a small triangle. And then I just pinched it in the middle and tied it there with some jute cord that I bought from Walmart. And then I tied in some of the lavender stems in there with a bow. And this is just such a welcoming seasonal touch that is so easy to do and looks really nice and aesthetic for guests. And if you were having a more formal party, you could always just add a little paper name tag with a hole punch written in cursive. I think that would be a fun little detail to add. But now that we have the linens we just have to add drinkware and silverware and we are done so i chose this woven glassware that i also bought from hobby lobby and i love how these coordinate back with the chargers and just give off that spring like casual feel next i wanted to add some champagne flatware because i think that looks really elegant and the warmth of the champagne just helps to add a bit of contrast now that we have the table settings all done, I just wanted to add some common use items to the center of the table. So I incorporated my favorite woven salt and pepper shakers. I have these out all season long because of the warmth that they add and I just love the unique look of them. So I'll link these below as well as anything that I can link from this whole tablescape. Another thing that you can do to make your tablescape look more high-end is to place some napkins in a bowl. And this just feels very resort-like and luxurious, even though it's super simple to do. And something that I also feel like makes a difference is just to use a bowl that's made out of a natural material. So something like stone, marble, or clay just really helps to give off that grounded, earthy feel. And now that our tablescape is complete, I wanted to make a tasty baked treat to have on hand for guests. And because we have our beautiful lavender garnish, I thought it would be fitting to make some blackberry lavender scones. And this recipe is by Half Baked Harvest and I will link it below in the description box. So first we're gonna mix together our dry ingredients, starting off with the flour, then adding in some baking powder, sugar, and salt. Next, we're gonna take our butter and use a cheese grater to shred it. And this is actually a trick that the recipe creator, Tegan, swears by, and I had never done this before, but it worked surprisingly well. And this recipe calls for cold butter. So even after it's been worked through the grater, you'll want to stick it back in the freezer for just a couple minutes to make sure that it's cold. So once that's all done, we're just gonna mix that in together with our dry ingredients until it's all nice and combined. And then we're just gonna add in our wet ingredients, starting with the egg, and then adding in the buttermilk after that. And then we're just gonna give this all a nice little toss. And with scones, you wanna make sure that you don't overmix. So the shaggy look is totally normal. So next, we're just gonna add some white chocolate chips and our blackberries and then fold that all in together. And then I just floured a surface and poured my dough out onto it. And then from there, I just turned it and formed it into a rectangle that was about one inch thick. And honestly, scones sound super fancy, but they truly are one of the easiest easiest baked goods to make. They're quick, they have minimal ingredients, and they're just something fun and different to offer your guests. Also, don't be afraid if the blackberries get smushed. Honestly, here I was trying to smush mine just to get that really pretty marbled purple effect that looks so gorgeous after it's been baked. Also, if you find the dough sticking to your hands, you can always just add a little bit more flour. And then from there, I just cut these up into squares and place them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and bake them at 375 degrees for about 20 minutes. So while those bake, it's time to make the icing and we're just gonna heat up some milk and butter. And then this is the optional lavender part. I bought my food grade lavender on Amazon and I used a heaping tablespoon and added that into my milk and butter. But in hindsight, I would definitely use less than this. This was too much. This is what the recipe called for, but I think I got a very potent lavender and it just was very overwhelming. So I would use maybe a teaspoon next time. But after adding the lavender, I covered it and I let it steep for about five minutes to really infuse that flavor in there and then I just took the milk and butter mixture and strained out the lavender and added some vanilla and some powdered sugar and then I just mixed that all together until it reached a drizzling consistency. 
consistency. And the lavender part is totally optional. You could make these without it, or instead you could always squeeze some lemon juice into the icing for a blackberry lemon scone. These truly were so delicious and so easy to make. From start to finish, it took me less than 30 minutes. And like I said, I would definitely use less lavender next time since it was a bit on the stronger side and I personally love lavender. But other than that, these tasted amazing and not only were they yummy, but they look just as pretty. And to make them even prettier, something that I love to have on hand when hosting is a pretty cake stand. I just line mine with some crumpled parchment paper to keep cleanup easy. And this just takes it to the next level and makes your kitchen feel like a quaint little cafe and is such a pretty way to store and display baked goods. These are great if you have guests staying the night and you wanna have a quick accessible treat on hand so they don't have to feel weird rummaging through your pantry. But I love how this all has turned out and now I just want to add one more little handmade touch to our tablescape. So I showed you all in my last home goods shop with me how I spotted this adorable hand-painted glass pitcher. This actually is a very high-end look. I've seen these on several designer sites for over $100, and I just love the look of them. So I thought it'd be fun to DIY one. So I picked up this $10 plain glass pitcher at home goods, but also check your local thrift store because after I bought that one, I spotted this at my local thrift store for only $3, which I thought was a really good deal. And then I just picked up some glass enamel paints and these are only a couple dollars each and for this project I only used two colors a yellow and a white and I simply just started painting daisies onto this picture and daisies are a very easy flower to paint and because this is handmade I think it looks really charming if each one isn't totally perfect it's also very forgiving because if you make a mistake you can simply just wipe it off and start over and this idea is really very versatile. You can do these on wine glasses, cocktail glasses, or maybe a glass vase or like a decanter. You can also do different flowers or colors. Just get creative with it. And something to note is that once the paint has fully dried, you can follow the directions on the paint bottle and bake them, which actually cures the paint and makes it dishwasher safe, which is really nice. So this was what it looked like when it was finished. And I just kept the flowers on the bottom half of the pitcher because a lot of times I like to make pretty drinks or, you know, diffuse fruit into a drink. So I wanted an unobstructed View of the fruit when the pitcher is full but I love how this turned out and how the flowers look when the light shines through it it's just such a sweet detail to add to a tablescape and a fun little handmade touch so something that is very inexpensive and easy to do when hosting but makes a big impact is making infused ice cubes so I just went out to my herb garden and collected some mint leaves and then I sliced up some lemon and cucumber into small pieces and this just adds a refreshing flavor to water and not only tastes great but it looks so pretty as well and you can do this with so many things you could do it with berries or even with edible flowers like pansies to give off a spring-like aesthetic And a couple of hours later, we had these beauties. And how stunning do these look? Not only do they infuse flavor into the water, but it's such a great way to add a little punch of color, enhancing the aesthetic. And I love how the green and yellow looks with our gorgeous daisies and the spring-like vibe that this gives off. So this right here is the finished setup. I hope that you all feel inspired to have some friends or family over this season and know that you don't have to spend a fortune to get that designer feel in your space. And you can see how we used these budget-friendly items to create a cozy aesthetic and atmosphere perfect for hosting this spring and summer season. All right, everyone, that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help to support the channel. And be sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell because I post new home decor content every single week. So make sure you don't miss any more of that. And also I'm very active over in my community page. I post things like sales, restock alerts, and new arrivals over there. So that is another benefit of being subscribed as well. And I just wanna thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope that you have have a fabulous week and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!